Hello, everyone. Here is our illusion. Welcome back to WebGPU fundamental tutorial. Last week, we learned vertex buffer and bind group to update pipelines dynamically. Today, we'll learn basic 3D transformation principles and how to use vertex information with bind group to draw basic 3D graphics dynamically. This tutorial will be divided into two videos. Today, we'll first learn the basic principles of 3D transformation, and in the next video, we'll implement it in the demo. OK, let's first understand the composition of the WebGPU coordinate system. The x-axis is distributed from left to right from minus 1 to 1, and y-axis is from bottom to top from minus 1 to 1, and z-axis is the distribution of 0 to 1 from the screen surface. We generally call this coordinate system NDC, short for Normalized Device Coordinate. Our graphics are actually built in a uh, rectangle 3D space. People may ask, our monitor or the graph we see is actually a 2D dimension, and how does GPU convert a 3D dimension coordinate system into a 2D image? Actually, GPU projects the entire NDC space directly on the screen surface to simply put, a, put the Z coordinates of all vertices to zero position in a parallel way. So for a triangle, no matter what its uh, z-axis coordinates are, as long as it's between 0 and 1, the graphic we can see is a 2D uh, triangle, and we cannot detect the change in depth. For a 3D cube, if there is no animation or light effect, we can only see a set projection on the screen as a square. What if there are graphics or vertices out of the rectangular space? It's very simple. The GPU will help us automatically crop the corresponding graphics and the vertex information, and only the part that remains in the NDC space, those outside space, will be discarded. But there is no space limit of the final result that we output from the vertex shader. We can, of course, set coordinates beyond minus 1 to 1. GPU will help us automatically crop and normalize the result to the range of NDC. So we call the space in the vertex shader as a clip space. Beginners, we just need to understand how a 3D space is converted into a 2D graphic. What we mainly need to learn is how to use the vertex shader for graphics drawing. In the actual scenario, apart from the graphics themselves, we need to also make some various changes to these graphics to meet the actual display requirements. For example, we did a simple translation of a 2D triangle in the last video, and also ask people to think after class if you can facing more complex changes how to calculate coordinates. So let's first understand the transformation of the model space. Transformation in space can actually be split into translation, rotation, and scaling. Actually, 2D graphics and 3D graphics transformation are similar, only the coordinates dimension are different. Translation is relatively easy to understand and easy to ca calculate. Like the triangle last translation we did last week, we just added a value to the corresponding XYZ coordinates. How about rotation? If the figure is rotated 180 degrees from the center point, then the corresponding result is just the reverse of Y axis. But what if the graph is not rotated at the center point? Then how can we calculate? For example, it rotates freely on three axes at any angle. If you add a uh, zoom and translation together, and how do we calculate the final corresponding coordinates? These transformations are difficult to be derived by simple geometric relationships. So is there a better way to deal with it? Probably a pure mathematical way. The answer is yes. We have a mature algorithm system to deal with those various spatial transformation, that is matrix transformation, with which we can do the translation, rotation, and the scaling, and can be represented by 4x4 four four matrix. If it is a two-dimensional change, it can be represented by 3x3 three three matrix. The coordinates just need to be multiplied by the corresponding matrix to get the result. The first matrix, if a coordinate 
multiply by this one, we can move x, y, z coordinate by a, b, c individually. If multiplied by this second matrix, we can get the result of the coordinate rotating theta angle around the x axis. If multiplied by the last matrix, we can zoom the x, y, z by a, b, c individually. Through transformation matrix, we can convert complex geometric relationships into algebraic relationships. It is very convenient for us to do the calculation and processing. And we also have very helpful math libraries to help us to generate this corresponding matrix and perform the matrix calculation. For beginners, we just need to learn how to use those libraries to do the corresponding matrix calculation. People who are interested in may do some research after class to get the derivation process. We are not going to introduce too much here, but we need to pay attention to a concept here. We can see that in order to satisfy this 4x4 matrix multiplication, we actually added one more coordinate to x, y, z to become a 1x4 matrix. Call this kind of coordinates with complement as homogeneous coordinates. The last we do, the coordinates we use in the vertex shader is actually VAC4, not 3 dimension. So we have to complement three dimension coordinates into a VAC4 because only this homogeneous coordinates can be performed the multiplication and be returned. GPU also uses this 4x4 matrix internally to perform processing operations. So we also put the clip space of the vertex shader as homogeneous space. Okay, after understanding those basic model transformation, do we have any other needs for change? Of course there is, like this scene. We just introduced the graphics we see on the screen, and uh, which are a projection on the axis of NDC space. These four triangles have a different depth on the Z axis, but it doesn't show in the screen. There is no difference on the size between those four triangles except the color. We call this kind of projection as orthogonal projection. But sometimes we want the 3D scene to be more in line with our human eyes, that is, perspective effect. The triangle further away from the screen, which should be smaller, and the triangle near the screen should be larger. Additionally, we also need to consider the needs of projection from different angles. For example, the same scene viewed from the front and from the back should look different. So how to achieve this? Do we need to rearrange the order of the position of all models and to make them turn back? This approach is definitely unreasonable and inefficient, especially if the scene has a lot of objects. So do we have a processing method like the model transformation? Now let's introduce the concept of view frustum. We virtualize a camera space to simulate the real projection results. This is a perspective projection, as the real camera and our human eyes. What we see is actually a frustum space emanating from a point. The objects in the frustum body will eventually be projected into the lens of camera or to our eye retina. And in computer graphics, we can abstract this projection relationship into the structure of this graph. We can divide the scene into near plane and far plane, and eventually all the models will be projected onto the near plane. So if we see from behind, then the scene is projected will be also different. Then we can easily simulate the different perspectives without changing the overall structure of the scene itself. Besides, we need to restore this virtual frustum structure into the rectangle projection space. The objects close to the near plane will be uh, actually been enlarged, and objects near to the far plane will be uh, squeezed. So how can we do this complex graph transformation? Actually, we can use the projection matrix. The algorithm of this projection matrix will be a little bit more complicated. We are not going to introduce this in detail, but we just need to know that 
it is just similar as the previous model transformation. We just need to multiply this projection with the coordinates. So for beginners, we just need to know how to use the corresponding math library to calculate this matrix transformation. Okay, after understanding this commonly used spatial transformation, let's summarize. So what are the steps to display a complete 3D graphic. Firstly, we need to build the vertex coordinates for the entire graph, which is a local coordinate space. And then we can use translation, rotation, and scaling matrix to transform a graph into a word spatial coordinate. We also interest the concept of cameras and view thruster to simulate what it looks like from the different perspectives without changing the structure of the scene itself. For example, in this scene, if we look from the top, then it's equivalent to see the upper section of each object. So we just need to uh, multiply this graph by the corresponding projection matrix to get a final clip space result. To achieve the perspective effect, cube is closer which is larger, and the cylinder is the furthest, so it is small. Then GPU will normalize our clip space and discard the graphics outside the NDC space and finally put the entire NDC space to get the result of a 2D plane. And the last two spots in the whole process is actually done automatically by the GPU driver, so no developers involved required. The previous steps seen construction and model transformation mainly implemented in the developer's logic code. While coding, we need to pay attention to two key points. Firstly, the coordinate system of the entire world space can be different from the clip space. As we introduce the concept of virtual cameras and view thruster, we can freely arrange the coordinate system structure according to the virtual uh, thruster the orientation and the size of the entire space can be customized to our needs. There is no need to force the range of the coordinate system and direction of the axis. It is more convenient for developers and habit of our human perspective. The final result only needs to be transformed by the projection matrix and then converted into the coordinate system of the clip space. In the general scene, we'll use a separate coordination system to build the whole world. For example, this coordinate system, which is also the default coordinate system of OpenGL and WebGL. The axis direction extends from inside the screen to outside the screen, and the center of the entire space is coordinate at 0, 0, 0. It can reach infinitely in the directions of this three axis. We may also use this kind of coordinate system in the demo later to build a cube. And then all the coordinates are finally multiplied by a projection matrix to restore into the default coordinate of WebGPU. So second point, let's think about how to process vertex data. If we follow the strict spatial conversion steps, we can do the transform for the vertex shader data first and then perform the projection transformation. Finally, pass the vertex data into the vertex shader via vertex buffer. Then the vertex shader will return the result. But we generally don't recommend this way. Why? Because we change the original vertex data. If we only draw one graph, that is A easy way. But if the vertex data could be reused, for example, we draw 1000 triangles, and the location is different. We process in this way. We need to prepare 1,000 independent vertex buffers. And we need to dynamically switch between these 1,000 vertex buffers. And this way is very efficient in terms of data writing and pipeline call switching. So we recommend the second method. Once the vertex data is established according to the local coordinate system, unless the model itself changes, we generally don't change it anymore. We just pass this into the vertex shader via the vertex buffer, and let's prepare an additional GPU buffer to install the matrix. So we multiply the model view matrix and also the projection matrix. 
to form a model view projection matrix, which also known as MVP matrix. We pass this one into the vertex shader via the band group as a global parameter, and then we can multiply the coordinate of the vertex by this MVP matrix in the vertex shader. The calculation result of the corresponding matrix is the same as the first method, and the advantage of the second processing method is the original data source has not been changed. So we can replicate the vertex data of a model. We just need to switch band group to draw the same model in different locations. It is much more efficient than switching the vertex buffer directly. In addition, another benefit of this method is that matrix computing is actually a relatively uh, expensive. Comparing to do it in the JavaScript CPU, we put the matrix multiplication in the shader and we use the GPU parallel computing efficiency. It is much more efficient and GPU also been optimized a lot for the matrix computing. So in theory, we recommend put more computing matrix into the GPU shader. Example, we can put the process of calculating the MVP matrix into the uh, compute shader. We'll go through this 3D transformation process in the demo in the next video. Alright, that's all for today. Thanks for watching and welcome to subscribe to our channel. I'll see you in the next time.